In the opening scene, we are introduced to an oppressive dystopian world that is controlled by a so-called state. Their strict rules dominate every aspect of life, and they are known to manipulate minds. Creativity and innovations are replaced by excessive loyalty towards the state's belief. The scene then shifts to a woman named Janet Tyler, who seems to have been kidnapped and brought to this world. She is from another planet where oppression doesn't exist. It turns out that she has just undergone her 11th treatment procedure in hopes of fixing her facial deformity. The state wants her to look normal, like the other people residing here. With her original appearance, she will be hated and rejected by society. Currently confined within a hospital room, Janet's head is completely covered by bandages, obscuring her face entirely from view. The doctors and nurses, who are lurking in the shadows of the darkened hospital room, describe her face as a pitiable, distorted mass of flesh, indicating that she is very ugly. However, the ultimate outcome of the treatment procedure will remain a mystery until the bandages are removed. Janet, who is overwhelmed by the unbearable presence of the bandages on her face, pleads with the doctor. She tries her best to convince him to remove the burdensome coverings ahead of schedule. However, the doctor remains cautious and unsure, expressing doubts about the chances of things turning out well. In an attempt to comfort her, he informs her that there are many others who share the same misfortune. In fact, some people look much worse than she does. He goes on to say that if the current treatment proves unsuccessful, the state would permit her to meet other people of her kind so that they can form a community and feel better about themselves. But this idea only worries Janet even more as she dislikes living amongst such people. Striving to convince the doctor of her desire to exist as a normal human being, Janet proposes the use of masks in order to hide her face. She even promises that she will never bother anyone or even go near them. To support a living, she will accept any job she can get, whether it be small or big. However, despite all of her claims, the doctor reminds her that social policies are determined by the state, and his actions are bound by the regulations established therein. Janet, who has now become angry, protests vehemently against the injustice of the system. According to her, the state neither possesses divine authority nor the capacity to dictate the course of human lives, so it cannot just punish people for being born with deformities. As Janet's efforts to sway the doctor prove futile, her frustration escalates, driving her to a state of frenzy. She screams at the top of her lungs to have the bandages removed from her face immediately. However, the doctor and nurse somehow manage to hold her and administer a dose of sedative, making her fall into a deep sleep. After some time has passed, the doctor eventually decides to remove the layers of bandages around Janet's face. He then instructs his co-workers to make the necessary arrangements for the same. However, amidst the preparations, a nurse hesitates to carry out the orders, as she is uncomfortable with how Janet looks. When the doctor learns of this, he becomes visibly upset and questions why Janet or anyone else should be judged solely based on how they look from the outside. He actually feels bad for the patients and wants everyone to treat them as normal human beings. However, the nurse simply tells him to refrain from questioning her any further, as it is considered treason. Hearing this, the doctor finds himself in a very difficult situation. He really wants to support Janet and help her feel better, but at the same time, he has to abide by the strict regulations made by the state. In the next scene, we are introduced to a prominent figure in the ruling hierarchy of the state, who takes center stage on national television to talk about the virtues of a glorious conformity. The leader reminisces about a previous era of humanity that was viewed as lacking direction, lacking productivity, and excessively driven by sentimental emotions. During that time, people held a strange idea that differences among individuals didn't matter much. They didn't discriminate when it came to race, color, caste, religion, and more importantly, facial features features. However, the leader confidently asserts that these beliefs have now been proved wrong. There are scientific facts which prove that a person is superior if he or she has better facial features. This is why Canada has had a prime minister for eight years who enjoys going bananas on Halloween. Back at the hospital, the doctor has come to a conclusion. He is now about to remove Janet's bandages, freeing her of all the troubles she has endured. But prior to starting this critical procedure, he issues a stern warning, asking her to remain Still, the doctor stresses that if she makes even a slight movement, he will make the nurses hold her back and administer her with anesthesia, inducing a state of sedation. Hearing this, Janet is a bit scared, but she responds with a calm voice that she will be at her best behavior. She will also refrain from being emotional or crying. With this understanding established, the doctor commences the delicate process of unraveling the bandages. The atmosphere in the room is tense, as they have spent weeks on the surgery. Janet also starts becoming nervous, but the doctor quickly 
quickly calms her down and offers her comfort. He assures her that even if the ultimate outcome of this procedure falls short of expectations, she will still have the opportunity to lead a long and fulfilling life. She can live within a community of people who share her similar circumstances. In that community, people don't discriminate at all. Instead, they help each other out. It is almost like the early ages where everyone was equal, except now they're all poor too. Hearing all of this, Janet becomes concerned and inquires if there are any alternative options in case of the procedure failure. In response, the doctor discloses that, under specific circumstances, the state permits the extermination of certain individuals deemed undesirable. However, he acknowledges the presence of multiple factors to be taken into account, including Janet's age and overall physical condition. Since she is healthy and young, it is almost certain that she won't be exterminated. After much anticipation, the moment arrives when the the last layer of the bandage is finally lifted. Everyone watches with nervousness, hoping that the procedure has worked. However, their expression quickly changes when they catch a glimpse of her face. Sadly, Janet still remains the same, ugly and undesirable. Even after all these procedures, she cannot change what she has become. Following this, we are finally shown Janet's face, which, contrary to our expectations, is strikingly beautiful. She has a mesmerizing appearance, like that of an actress or a model in our familiar world. However, in a shocking turn of events, the camera then pans to the doctors, nurses, and other staff, and we get to know that their faces are completely deformed and twisted. Their faces appear droopy, with heavy brows, tired and lifeless eyes, swollen and twisted lips, and wrinkled noses with noticeably larger nostrils, reminiscent of pig snouts. With this revelation, we finally get to know the nature of the place. Having deformed facial features is considered normal and desirable, while the people with beautiful faces are hated and despised. They are given less rights, are made fun of by the locals, and are forbidden from dating the desirable ones. In short, they are subjected to excessive hate and treated like trash. Meanwhile, when Janet notices the faces of the hospital staff, she freaks out and starts screaming. All this time, she was under the impression that the people here would be better looking, but it is actually the exact opposite. Dr. Oink Oink and the Piggledy Wiggledies try to calm her down, saying everything is fine, but she pushes them aside and escapes the room. But as Janet navigates through the hospital's hallways, she begins to witness the startling revelations of what is deemed normal within this alternate reality. Everywhere she turns, she is confronted by the sight of people whose appearances are very different from the conventional standards of beauty that she had known. Meanwhile, the hospital's flat screen televisions, which are present throughout the premises, suddenly announce the presence of the state's leader. In his speech, the leader announces about the virtues of conformity, urging the citizens to live unitedly with the people of the same kind. He appears to be a hateful person who despises humans from other worlds. On the other hand, Janet reaches a room where she comes across a handsome individual by our standards. He goes by the name Walter Smith. Just then, the doctor also arrives and delivers some encouraging news. He reveals that Walter is one of the inhabitants from the deformed community, where Janet is destined to end up. This community is composed entirely of people who share her physical characteristics, a place where her perceived ugliness will not be a source of concern for the state. Janet is overwhelmed by the information and she does not know how to react. Sensing her nervousness and doubt, Walter approaches her and offers her comfort. He explains that she will surely find love and belonging in the community, and also assures her that she will live a happy life there. Moreover, he shares a saying passed down through the ages that beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder, which means means that while people of the state and their society may deem Janet's appearance as unattractive, there exist other people in the wider world who will perceive her innate beauty. Following this emotional exchange, Janet and Walter start their journey towards their separate community side by side. At this point, our protagonist has finally found a sense of comfort, and she is very excited to meet other people just like her. She wants to do normal things, which are impossible under the governance of the state, like going out for shopping, eating at restaurants, partying at clubs making new friends, and so on. But now, with this community, her dreams will finally come true. The movie ends as the medical staff observes the couple's departure from afar. <laughs> Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.